Hello, I'm Gary Light and welcome to Access All Areas. Well, we knew as early as Friday night the top eight is set in stone, but there's still plenty to be played out this season. And a lot to chat about, Damien Barrett. Welcome. Guys, I don't want to talk things down, but what once loomed as the single most exciting round of footy, this looming round 23 fixture, mm -hmm. is now effectively a dead rubber. All eight matches. Oh, well, let's call it off. Well, there's no sort of anticipation about it now, is there? There eight was matches. three weeks ago. There's not now. It's, yeah. The ladder's set, the four's set, the, the top eight's set, and it's it's very possible that the eight will come out exactly as it is going into Well, it. let's have the weekend off, Damo. I'm let's, not saying that. I am. I'm not saying that. But let's go away and have a break and come back fresh for the final. Well, there's one team who's going to go in uh, dead, effectively, and we'll get to that team in a moment. That's mm. Fremantle. But Adelaide yesterday, guys, it certainly did their <laughs> premiership hopes no harm in what they did yeah. by way of a number on Eagles. Shades of the elimination final last year between Port Adelaide and Richmond. That's how dominant this first quarter was. Have a look at the inside 50s. The disposal count was unbelievable. They controlled the ball, uncontested possession marks. And the hitouts are significant. I mean, Nick Natanui is such a dominant figure mm. for the West Coast Eagles. I think Sam Jacobs is set for a massive finals campaign should they get beyond week one. They were outstanding, Damo. And I tell you, this is a sleeping side who, if they get a home final, it's a slight possibility given yeah. Richmond could lose against North. They can go on and, and make the grand final. That's how good this side is. OK, well, let, let's say they don't. Let's say the ladder does stay as it is. It means they play away in that first week. Can they still do some yep. damage? Yeah, yeah, they can go pretty deep, I reckon. They're just so well balanced. I think Scott Camparelli's abilities and uh, performance since the tragic circumstances of Phil Walsh have been underplayed to a large degree because he hasn't beat his chest. He hasn't said, I want to coach this club. No. He hasn't declared himself. In fact, there's a suspicion he's about... He's getting interested now, though. Well, there's a suspicion that he's not that interested. Well, I, I don't know why. In yeah. terms of looking for a, a coach, if this boat was here in Melbourne and the results fell like this for the other clubs looking for a, um, an, a new coach, yep. then we'd be all over it. He's yep. done a magnificent job, and credit to the playing group who have gathered themselves in such a way that they just put the West Coast Eagles to the sword. Beautiful. You're big on, on a team's mental capacities, Gaz. Yep. Is, was this just a, a blip for the Eagles in what happened yesterday, given they knew that where they were going to finish? I'm a bit inclined to think that. Yeah, given that there are circumstances now in place, and we'll see this through the thread of this show and the thread of the rounds played on the weekend, once that Friday night game was over, hmm. then I don't care who you are, footballers uh, um, play above the shoulders yep. in a massive way, no matter how good they are. And there are, there are results throughout the course of this weekend which reflect that. The Fremantle team, guys, uh, going into the Melbourne's game yesterday, had two consecutive losses, got the win they needed to get. But Ross Lyon has forecast a massive change to his team yep. to play Port Adelaide this week. Got a problem? I've got a problem with, with it when you, when you factor in the integrity of the game, factor in the integrity of the competition, and factor in the integrity of the contest. And that's what I'm referring to. If I'm Ross Lyon, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm resting maybe 15 players if you can. Mm -hmm. You start, well, start off at what's half What's your problem the, then? Well, where's the integrity in that result? Where's the integrity in that match? The integrity lays when we look at the ladder and see them on top of the AFL ladder. What about in isolation? One game of it, this round 23. It doesn't, doesn't matter how you get there. You are entitled to do whatever it takes to get on top of the AFL ladder at the home of the at mm. the end of the home and away season and make an assault on the finals the best way you see fit. He's I'm, earned that right. I'm not disagreeing with you. you. So, well, so to get that clear. So but just deal I, with it. No, deal with the isolation of a game of footy that, that is going to be played in circumstances that are not right. Either legislate... I mean, if you're sort yep. of having a dollar each way, Damo, which is unlike you because you're a strong opinion. Not even a dollar each way at all. Well, you are. Either you say this needs to be outlawed and a legislation needs to be made that you play your best team or you deal with it. Are you, give me the definition that you've got of tanking. So tanking is when you deliberately try to lose. I would say, no, no, tanking, no, no, I would say tanking is going into a game not under your best circumstances. No, it's not. That's yes, it is. That's ridiculous. Well, that, that's what Melbourne got fined half a million dollars under, for. Under the best circumstances that you think... Fremantle think we are going in under the best circumstances to win the Premiership, yep. which is what football is all about. What about the Round 23 game against Port Adelaide? They're going to finish on top of the ladder and they are going to go into the uh, September campaign in the best position they possibly can mm. be, and that's what it's all about. It's an ugly look, though. It's, it's an not... ugly look for, for one game of footy. Well, you know what, Damo? There mm. are ugly looks throughout the course of Round 23, so let's get yep. back to our opening and just cancel it. What wasn't an ugly look, though, Gaz, was yep. the, what the Bulldogs did against North Melbourne, particularly in the last quarter when they uh, freed themselves up and, and broke away from what was a pretty tight game. Players well, like Bontempelli here and, and Stringer took over. I'd argue that there wasn't much riding on this either. Um, for the first two and a half quarters, yep. even three quarters, it was a pretty lacklustre affair. I know the, com the, the television commentators were begged to differ, but 
there was a goal or two apiece halfway through the second quarter. Mm. This is the way they've got to play in the next couple of weeks. And yep. no, no doubt Luke Beveridge will, free, well, not free them up, but he'll encourage this sort of footy. Look, don't underestimate coming back from the Perth trip they had, Gaz, and got smashed by West Coast in the end yeah. on a Sunday. Changed the team again, not afraid to do it. I liked what he did in the first two and a half, three quarters because it, they played a, in a manner which wasn't what got them to where they are on the ladder. In the last quarter, he opened it up and then you see Passenger play like that with Stringer and as pointed out, he was put behind the ball, surged yeah. forward. I like what they did early on you because they, played, I, they, they got some experience yeah. in, the, in that slow lockdown footy. Yeah, it, this is what I took out of the game. I looked ahead a week. Yep. They, both sides knew they were going to play finals. I looked ahead a week. Western Bulldogs played Brisbane, I think. Yep. They're not going to get a big hard hit out against Brisbane. So he had to get the hit out there. He had to get North Melbourne, Richmond, Friday night. Mm. So they got another big one coming. This is what I talk about mental capacity of players. Western Wilds, you can serve it up and say, right, this is it for us. Yep. And North Melbourne the other way, and they played like it. So their midfield of, uh, the North Melbourne midfield group, they'll, they'll be getting a pretty stern uh, going over in the next couple of days. Just yes or no, North Melbourne play the Bulldogs again if they do in the finals. Does that result change? I yes or no? the Western Bulldogs yesterday, and I would tip them again against the Kankers. OK, Brendan Bolton confirmed as coach of Carlton during the week and started uh, that process by sitting next to the uh, the gun recruiter of that club, Look, it's nice. Stephen laughing. Silvani. He's going, now it's not my problem, it's yours. To watch a ca another carnage yeah, outcome for that club against GWS. It was, and... Uh, would uh, Brendan Bolton have put a line through any players on the basis of that game yesterday? I doubt it. Mm. I mean, that would be done in conjunction with Silvani, who's been there and cast his eye over it for the whole year. Um, I don't. I don't. I think Brendan Bolton goes in in a great position. Do you? Yeah, I really do. Massive club who have been underperforming. They're a sleeper. They're a sleeping giant in terms. No, I'm of not their sure they're sleeping giant. Anymore. Well, they have 48,000 members this year already, Damo, mm. and they haven't won a game for the last five. Yeah, so you get that up and going, you get to 60, 65,000. I reckon that's a great position to be. No, in. I reckon they've lost their status. Is that? No, I think no, it's no, a, it's a bigger rebuild no, than no, they, they, anyone thinks. No question, they've lost their status. No mm. question at all. But if you're going to take over a club like that, take them on when they're at their lowest ebb. Yeah, and that's where they're at. Yep. Hey, the Cats guys yep. uh, drew against St Kilda around uh, 21, and then still had a chance to make the finals against Collingwood. Uh, on Friday night, but I don't know what happened in the last fortnight. Well, th this is this, the best way to sum this up is that everything was on the line for this footy club yep. in terms of keeping their unbelievable run of finals, and they couldn't get it done, which means they're not good enough. Mm. That's the bottom line there. Mm. And we can point the finger at the old blokes, which is being done, and I understand the um, intrigue about whether or not you know, these sorts of Kelly and Johnsons and Bartell go on. That's fair enough. And they were pretty ordinary on Friday night when it was on the line. But they're no more ordinary than and Tom Hawkins, who's just signed yeah. a five-year deal on massive money, or Harry Taylor, who's you know, the preeminent defender. Who What's happened to Taylor? Got nothing done at all. Those blokes played like they were cooked. So blame the old blokes all you want. Go and point the finger at Hawkins and Taylor and say, where were you? Hmm. You're the big blokes who are going to lead this club forward. You, you were a, a non-factor yep. when the season was on the line. That man last in shot too, the coach, Chris Scott. Does yep. he have, the, for the first time in his coaching career, some doubts? Uh, about? About himself as no. coach. No, not, not in the least. He's going to sit there and make tough decisions, which he had already said is going to be brutal. Yeah. He's going to welcome Danger in. He's going to welcome Henderson in and probably Scott Selwood. Reload and go again. James Frawley's an interesting case. Um, you wrote about him on Friday, Saturday in the Age, guys, about Lake. Yes, that producer could look at it. Um, <laughs> he did kick a goal. He hasn't got the celebration down pat. Just uh, the point being, he and Lake, can they find enough natural matchups for the two big men? And if it's not there, can he go forward? And I think that's what Al Clarkson was going to determine over the next couple of weeks. Who do they uh, play against in the finals where they both play back? Uh, certainly Adelaide, Jenkins yep. and Walker. Certainly Sydney. North Melbourne uh, with their tools in Petrie and Brown and or Waite and Sydney with Tippett and Franklin. And the others play one real big key, uh, key forward and then you know, three or four mediums. So they're the decisions ahead of Clark. Oh, he'll get it right. He always does. That's always the best coach. Guys, the footy ground can be a very dangerous place at the best of times, mm -hmm. but not normally when there's a loose ball and you're out by yourself. But oh, nice little turn of phrase there. Well, it's a turn of a that ball. ball, a bit like a Shane Warne... Uh, well, Doosra. we laugh at this, but Brodie Smith wasn't laughing when he went to the interchange bench and was still, minutes later, trying to gather himself, Damo, so a nice little one. So now, just let me get this straight before I say goodbye. Hmm. Will you be turning up this weekend? I'll be turning up. I'll be quite excited about some of the games. No, you're not. The don't, ga no, Gary, don't just don't take words out of my mouth. Don't try and square up now. Uh, don't forget to check out the wash-ups, which are going gangbusters on afl.com.au. Our club-by-club -club season reviews on every team continue this week with Essendon, the Saints and the Demons. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.